Welcome along to the Record Club, brought to you by Record Store Day, the official chart and National Album Day. My name is Jess Izat. Thank you very much for joining us. We are very excited to say that our guest this evening is Sebastian from the Viagra Boys to talk all about the band's new album, Welfare Jazz. If you're new to the Record Club, we're going to be spending the next half an hour talking to Sebastian all about his brilliant new record, and then we'll be putting your questions to him about the album for him to answer. So if there is anything that you would like to know about the new record, whether it be about a certain song, maybe the artwork or a particular lyric that you've enjoyed, drop us a question in the comments section below, and I'll be asking a selection of them in the second half of our chat. And on top of that, one lucky person who gets a question answered today will be randomly selected to win a pair of Bowers and Wilkins headphones. They are PX5 on-ear noise-cancelling headphones. That is such a wicked prize to win. So, uh, yeah, cure those January blues with a new pair of headphones. I've got the record right here with me. Um, if you haven't already picked up a copy of your own, make sure to head to your local record store, obviously online now, uh, to get one for yourself when our chat with Sebastian is over. So let's get straight into this week's Record Club and say a big hello to Sebastian from Viagra Boys. How are we doing? Woo! Oh, we uh, practiced a different sort of uh, entrance earlier, didn't we? <laughs> <laughs> How, how are you doing, Sebastian? How's it all going? Uh, just got home from work and um, yeah, it's all good. It's all good, yeah. So um, we're here today, obviously it's a record club, kind of like a book club, but for albums instead. Um, but I want to ask you a couple of questions about records before we jump straight into it with your album. So part of the reason that we run the record club is to support and celebrate record shops during uh, the pandemic and the lockdown. So I want to know, is there any uh, record shops that you are particularly fond of? Um... Yeah, sure. There's a few. Um, I guess Rough Trade in London. I really like them. Uh, I like going to Amoeba when I'm in California and uh, or in San Francisco. And um, there's a little record store by where, where I grew up called Red Devil Records also that I used to go to. Otherwise, a place called Pet Sounds here in Stockholm. And, That's uh, cool. Yeah. Uh, I can say that the only one that I've been to is obviously the Rough Trade, uh, Rough Trade East in London, and just seeing some of the performances there as well has just been like uh, my favourite times. Sadly, uh, not at the moment, but hopefully soon come. Um, and also, I want to know if there is someone that you know that has a really impressive record collection. Uh, there, I would say maybe um, I've got a friend named. Uh, Henrik Palm, Henrik Palm, he's also a musician, and he, uh, yeah, his whole house is just looks like it's built from records or something like that, but, and um, my dad's got a few good records, and yeah, that's about it. <laughs> Has he ever lent you any of his records, or is he quite... Yeah, um... yeah that's kind of how I got into, like, good music, is by stealing his shit and listening to it. <laughs> uh, do you remember the first one that you managed to to nab off him? Uh, probably never mind the Bollocks, actually, by Sex Pistols. Uh, just because I thought the name Sex Pistols was really cool. <laughs> um, and then he had this uh, substance by Joy Division, which I guess is like a like a collection of different EPs or something like that. But uh, yeah, those two really spoke to me. Um, we're also doing a new feature where each week the Record Club is kicking off uh, with a question from one of the many, many amazing independent record stores in the UK. And this week's question comes from Alistair. He's at Reflex Records in Nottingham. And Alistair wants to know, to what extent were the record's title and central themes inspired by the suppressed conditions that we're all currently living under? Um, now, I've got to say a big shout out to Reflex Records. Thanks for your question. But I think that I know that Welfare Jazz was recorded um, a little while before lockdown. Am I right in thinking yeah. that? That's true. Um, that's very true. Uh, we recorded it, I think, over a year ago. So 
I mean, we worked on a we worked on a couple things during um, COVID, but COVID hasn't really it hasn't really affected Sweden as much as maybe a place like the UK. Like we've still been allowed to meet up with other people and practice as a band. What's that like? (laughs) Oh, it's good. (laughs) Um, But, uh, but I guess like on that note, the, the name welfare jazz, like I, this is actually the first time I've ever uh, received money for, for um, from the government was actually just like a couple months ago. And that was because of COVID. Uh, I, yeah, so, but I never would have guessed that when I named the album Welfare Jazz, but I've actually received welfare now. So that's great. Yeah. Um, Yeah. Once again, thank you, Alistair, for getting that question over to us. And of course, um, why did you think to release these songs kind of so far from when you recorded them? to be honest, I think you'd have to ask my management and stuff like that. <laughs> it's it's been like I think all sorts of tactical moves somehow. Um I don't know, it just didn't feel right, I guess, in the beginning. I mean I don't really think about that kind of stuff too often. If if, if it was my choice, I probably would have released it a while ago just to be just to move forward. But um but uh I'm glad we re released it now also. Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm happy that you've released it now as well because um, I've been dancing around in my room to it. I mean, it has just been so loud and raucous. I uh, probably had to apologise to my housemate quite a few times, actually, uh, (laughs) playing it a bit too loudly in the mornings. But um, yeah, so I want to talk about the artwork first as well because I opened it up. Obviously, you've got this and I was really happy to know. (gasps) Oh, my God, who is your dog? Uh, This is my my buddy's dog, Zelda. (laughs) Hi. Oh my God. I love dogs so much. <laughs> this is actually the second dog that we've had at the record club. Did you say the name was Zelda? Yeah. I like the video game. Oh yes. I love, I love that. Um, how long are you looking after Zelda or is it just a visit? <laughs> uh, it's just a visit. Uh, sure. She lives, she lives here. It's my, uh, my friend's, my friend's mom's dog. I live oh, with my okay. friend's mom. So <laughs> Oh, I wish I, I need to get borrow my doggy or something, but I feel like that's not very COVID friendly over here um, in the UK. Um, but yeah, before we actually, I do have a question about dogs later on, so uh, we'll get to that, I'm sure. But um, yeah, I just wanted to get to the 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 artwork because obviously we've got um, the front cover, which I'm sure many people have seen. But it was only when I received this in the post that I got to see the rest of it. Um, it who did the artwork was it am i right in thinking it might have been you yeah it was me yeah i yeah i painted that and then and then i just kind of used the the paint that i kind of used the paint that i was using to paint that to to write uh welfare jazz and i kept spelling it wrong on this piece of paper <laughs> and then i just showed i remember showing that paper to my to the guys and they're like oh well, this would be a good cover so i guess we just used my like shitty <laughs> attempt to uh yeah, that part was kind of just like an accident. And uh, yeah. That's hilarious. That's the kind of like doodles that you end up. Yeah, I you've got very like neat doodles though, I will say. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Um, and what's the what's the idea? So we've got a dog paw and then we've got a cowboy. Yeah, I I actually the inspiration from that was I saw this um there was this uh there was some lady on YouTube that posted uh, this video where she was like ex- a Swedish lady, like this spiritual type woman. And she was kind of um, explaining why COVID-19 was a hoax. And like uh, she was talking about all sorts of conspiracies and stuff like that. And at the same time, talking about 5G and like how we should all stay away from 5G. And she was just this crazy fucking lady and she said that she was talking to the angels and they took the angels told her that COVID-19 was fake and all this shit and I got really interested in her so I I went into her website and on her website she had this like uh, she had like different things that she does like healing uh, talking with angels blah 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 and each with a little photo and one of those things was zone therapy for dogs 
And then there was just this little picture of her holding a dog paw and touching it. Like that. <laughs> uh, and I don't know why that, I, that, that became the inspiration for that painting. So it, this was, was the old lady and. Yeah. Well, I mean, I guess that's kind of like just this cowboy because the, the, the record kind of has this kind of like cowboy theme to it in a way. Um, and then that's, yeah, the cowboy's giving his own therapy to the dog. I, I never would have guessed that, but oh. I do like it. What are these? Are they volcanoes? Volcanoes, yeah. Yeah, okay. So they're in a very hot country. I like it. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big fan. Um, <laughs> and does this feed into, are your tattoos like this? Do you paint for your tattoos? or Because I my, understand my that you tattoos make don't tattoos. Really, they don't really look like that, but, uh, mm. but yeah, I do tattoo. Okay. Yeah, and um, talk to me about the the idea, the running theme of the cowboys, and I guess the the country vibe, and just ending on a tribute to John Preen. Which, by the way, I only discovered that this was a cover after becoming obsessed with your version of the song. Oh, okay. um, so yeah, talk to me a bit about that. Why you decided to include that on the album? I actually was just like, oh my goodness, you need to. You actually need to do a full country album. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I've actually talked about like if I if I ever do a solo project, I think it'll be a country album. But um, it's it's the I combination love... of the weird lyrics too. Do you know what I mean? Like the the sort of country like vibe, and then saying something kind of weird. Yeah, I mean, um, yeah, that's what I'm going for, I guess. But. Uh, I don't know. At the time of uh, at the time of recording that, I kind of had um, uh, I was just listening to a shitload of country and uh, and like uh, I had recently broken up with my girlfriend and there's all sorts of great country lyrics about like getting left and uh, and hitting the road and just doing something new and you know like not being phased by it and I just kind of wanted to embrace that feeling i guess uh and yeah that's kind of what i was going for i guess um is that where so the next kind of song that i was um looking into that i just i just kind of pick out lyrics of songs that i'm a big fan of and uh toad where it says that you don't need no man and you don't need no woman um i feel like obviously a lot of your songs do have a lot of tongue-in-cheek obviously you need some people around you but yeah yeah, uh, it was quite nice like I feel like it was quite inspirational though from from my end I was singing it being like yeah I can do this on my own don't need no one <laughs> yeah. um but yeah what was what was your thoughts yeah, around that's it? Kind of the same thing is that like you know I guess being like I guess being left in the dust that's the only kind of way you can get over it is like fuck it I don't need anybody you know I'm, <laughs> I'm a I'm a wild man you know I can I'll just hit the road and go to the next town and have a good time, you know, but, uh, you know, that's obviously bullshit. <laughs> so, yeah. What's your favorite song on the album, the new album? Um, I would say I feel alive, uh, is probably, probably my favorite, uh, especially towards the end of the song. I think it's just turns into like, I don't know. I really like blues and I really, and it's kind of got this like, Nick Cave Iggy style to it in a way that I or like night like kind of like the song Night Clubbing. Or that's what I was kind of going for. I don't know if it made it through, <laughs> or I don't know if that really worked out. But um but yeah, I just I kind of love singing the blues and uh, it's yeah, it's my favorite way to perform, I think. So so that one's my favorite, yeah. Has there been a uh, interesting or surprising fan favorite that's come out of the album so far? Mm, it's been very mixed, so not really. Um, like with the previous album, like I don't know. With the previous album, there was like uh, uh, one song that I just really didn't like at all, which was Shrimp Shack, and that was like the favorite amongst so many people and it kind of pissed me off i was like oh fuck. <laughs> i put absolutely no effort into that song and then it turned out to be one, one of one of the favorites and um and i guess like um yeah i don't know with this album i think it's just very mixed so far so yeah 
we'll yeah. see. We'll see. Probably when we play live, that shit will start to surface a bit more. That's it, isn't it? When things kind of come a bit more to life, it's uh, easier to see. Um, remember, guys, if you've got any questions for Sebastian, I'm going to be heading those to uh, to those very soon. So make sure to get them in the comments section below, and we'll be getting to that. Um, but yeah, on the subject of shrimp, I did actually have to look into why you had such a connection with that. And I feel like, um, I already know that. And I feel like lots of your fans do, but I did want to talk about shrimp tech enterprises. I think it's probably, it's just a genius idea, basically. <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, that's actually the, the name of our, that's actually the real name of our company that, <laughs> that mm -hmm. is viagra boys basically oh. so like all of our all of the band members are our co-owners in the company shrimp tech enterprises but it started off as this weird uh kind of started off as this weird like fantasy world that i created when i was on a lot of speed a few years ago um and uh like just like this whole i don't know i kind of like thought that i was in some sort of electronics company making making electronics and shit like that. But I was just kind of sitting around taking speed and wasting time really. But, uh, but I guess it's kind of, um, yeah, it's, it's this, um, yeah, this, this weird fantasy world that I want to create, you know, through my art and through uh, music. I was going to say, I wanted to pitch an idea because I had a weird idea about having a noodle party. And I thought that maybe shrimp tech enterprises and yeah, a noodle party that, collaboration. Yeah. <laughs> I noticed that there was like some sort of noodles or pasta or something going on. Uh, so yeah, I thought it'd be I'm a perfect into, I'm fit. Into, I'm into noodles as well, or anything mm. in a, like uh, this kind of form. Noodles and shrimp obviously go very well together as well. So I feel like there'd be lots of investors. Um, we'll, yeah. uh, this is an idea that I actually have though, guys. So anyone watching, no stealing that. Um, but yeah, bringing it yeah. back to the album, <laughs> I've noticed that there are lots of people getting involved with their questions. Um, but I wanted to talk about the the music videos because I really enjoyed how it kind of picked off. Um, so what you have, uh, Ain't Nice first, and then Creatures picks up from where it left off, which yeah. is quite nice because uh, I watched them in a row as well. I was like, wait a second, did that happen? Um, yeah, talk to me about the music videos. It seemed really fun to to film. Uh, yeah, um, they star. Yeah, they were really fun to film. Um, they're directed by a guy named Eric, who works at a company called Snusk, and I've actually known the guys that started that company since uh, since I moved to Sweden around 2007. So it was really nice to work with them, and really easy to work with them. Also, I kind of just had like this idea for Ain't Nice, which was. Uh, it came from a dream. I had this dream that like it was, it was or more of a nightmare where just like everyone was just totally pissed off with me and uh, or, or like everybody in my in my dream was just done with me. Basically, like I talked to my mom and she started crying. I walked down the street. People were spitting at me, throwing shit at me. You know, my girlfriend was crying. My friends hated me. And I was just like I was just totally hated in this dream. So I had this idea of my original idea for the for the video was that I was just going to walk down the street and sing the song and everyone was going to try to beat the shit out of me at the same time. But uh, I think that would have been too, uh, I mean, I don't know. It would have been hard to film. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Eric kind of took my idea and uh, pitched uh, his version of it. And um, yeah. I think my favorite bit is when you're trying to wrestle the bike off this old dude. He's not having any of it. <laughs> yeah, hold on one second. I'm sorry for doing this. Um, it's all right, guys. Uh, if you're watching at home, you're wondering where Sebastian's gone. So we're talking about Welfare Jack, the album. I've been listening to it on repeat. Um, and that was me filling. <laughs> all right, yeah, I'm back. Good, you're back, back in the room people's questions i do actually want to know because i was literally i was you know making little notes i was watching the music videos i was enjoying it a lot then uh into creatures 
and these beautiful Pomeranians, I'm going to guess they're Pomeranians, pop up on the screen. And I'm just like, oh, yeah, like, like what dogs? Do you like dogs? And then literally they're getting launched in there without <laughs> spoiling too much. Um, yeah, what is it about dogs? What is it about you and dogs? I don't know. I just love dogs. Uh, I think I prefer them over over people. And uh, I just feel like I have a special connection with dogs. Uh and I love the way dogs think. Uh, and um, I don't know. I just have these weird obsessions over certain topics. Um, and as I said in another interview, I think I'm just going to have to see a therapist about it and see what it's all about. But it's all it's been like that for years. It's been like that since I was 20, maybe. So I honestly don't think you're alone. Lots of people are obsessed with dogs. We do not deserve yeah. dogs. Um, I just get caught. If I procrastination is a big thing for me, but I try and avoid Facebook at all costs because I swear it knows how much I love dogs. <laughs> and those dodo videos get me each time. I've even uh, been obsessed with um, what yeah, is it? The every, dog, every, dog training every videos. Sunday. Every Sunday, I if I, or every time I'm hungover, if I'm laying in bed, I'll watch those and just ball my eyes out. <laughs> um there's also actually a dog trivia app which i've noticed that i don't know as many breeds as i thought i did so that's also quite fun if you want to procrastinate doing that but um what's uh what's your favorite type of dog mm-hmm. uh, probably like uh weimaraners just because i grew up with a weimaraner uh otherwise uh i like german short-haired or i like hunting dogs in general and then uh Italian greyhounds and greyhounds. I draw a lot of greyhounds. Or, or anytime I draw a dog, I'll draw a greyhound. I don't know why. Oh, interesting. Have you done a lot of those as tattoos? Yeah, I've done maybe 50 greyhounds or something. That's awesome. So, guys, if you want a greyhound tattoo, you're going to have to head to Sebastian, hit him up. Um, so we have a couple of questions from you guys at home. Billy on the Record Store Day page says, I, if you'd... If you could collaborate with any other artist, who would it be? Oh, God. Um, I don't know, probably Iggy Pop. Boring boring answer, but probably, I guess. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to go with that. I actually saw an interview where you challenged Iggy Pop to, I think it was a rap battle. Yeah. I was Did really- he ever respond? I was really drunk in that interview. <laughs> and I'm glad. Hopefully he hasn't seen it. I, I, you know, but, uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, Ippo uh, Meki, sorry if I have pronounced that incorrectly, uh, on the Record Club page says, what is your favourite Iron Maiden record? Uh, probably the first one that's just called Iron Maiden or Killers. Uh, Stephen Spencer on the Record Club says i know you're often put alongside idols in comparison which you've mentioned bothers you a bit which other bands are you listening to at the moment um i don't know i I mostly listen to a lot of old music to be honest uh i just like i listen to a lot of country a lot of uh tammy wynette is what i listen to these days um Otherwise, I've been listening to The Baby, his album Kirk. I like a lot. Um, and uh, um, uh, I was listening to some Devo today. And uh, yeah, I don't know. My 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 brain goes completely blank when I <laughs> when I think about what I listen to because I'm I've got this weird way of listening to music where. I'll, I like listen to one song at a time for like a, a week or, or weeks. You know, I'll just listen to that song on repeat over and over and over again. Uh, like I, I borrowed my, I don't have Spotify, but I have my friend Spotify logged in on my phone. So he always sees what I'm listening to. And he's like, man, you're fucking crazy. Like you've been listening <laughs> to the same song every day, like 800 times. Uh, Does it actually say what song that you listen to and when? I have a, no, oh, I opens, guess it would say it, most when recent. He opens his phone, when he opens his phone, it just says listening to blah, blah, blah. blah. <laughs> so, yeah. uh, maybe you need to get your own accounts then. Uh, mine's the Spotify unwrapped at the end. I'm just like, oh, God, I don't, I don't know if I want people seeing this, to be honest. Yeah. 
Um, who have we got here? We've got Amirgan Kara on the Record Club page, who says, have you ever thought of picking up an instrument to play alongside the others? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I play uh, I play a little bit of instruments. I got a, I got my banjo here on the wall. Um, otherwise, uh, you are try. a country head, aren't you? Uh, yeah, <laughs> at, at times. Uh, otherwise, I play uh, I play some guitar. I play, I've got a bass, and then I was really into synthesizers and electronic music for a long period of time. So I've got like I've got boxes full of synthesizers and shit like that. Um, I just don't have any room for them in my room right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, yeah, so I mean, I do play instruments, and when we record, I do play. I do play some of the stuff uh, when we're writing songs as well. Um, so that is all we have time for, I'm told. But I have one last actual question for you uh, from me, selfishly. Um, so I've heard that you've got perhaps a follow-up album already in the works. Is that true? I'm not allowed to talk about it. My, <laughs> my management got all pissed off. And he's like, you've, you've told every fucking interview that you've... But, um, but so yeah, we're got, the I've only some... interview... Yeah, I'm joking. Yeah. But, yeah, I've got some shit. We've got some shit ready. We've, we've recorded a lot during, during uh, um, COVID-19. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so stay busy. Expect some heavy rock and roll. Yes, we'll keep an eye out. We'll keep an eye out. Um, yeah, thank you so much, Sebastian, for joining thank us you. today. Thank you. If you guys at home haven't already got yourself a copy of Welfare Jazz, then we absolutely re- absolutely recommend you got to go order one from your local record shop. Uh, I'm also excited to announce that the winner of this week's Bowers and Wilkins PX5 Wireless Headphones Prize is drum roll uh we have got steven spencer who is the winner of that so yeah you're going to be listening to the new record in hd uh well not vision but through your headphones uh please slide into the record club's dms and we'll get those headphones to you thank you so much everyone for joining us and sending in your questions my name is jess is and i will see you in two weeks time our special guest will be announced on the Record Club social media very soon. So you can uh, make sure to follow us and keep up to date with what we're doing. And uh, obviously, all our previous episodes also are available for you to catch up on on our YouTube channel. So, yeah, I will see you on January the 27th back on Facebook Live. Uh, Sebastian from the Viagra Boys, once again, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. And thanks for all the questions, everybody. Bye bye.